from Alpe de Zwift to Alpe d'Huez. This is my journey across the French Grand Alps. Arguably the most spectacular and difficult cycling on the planet. My good friend Simon and I decided to ride our bikes from Lake Geneva to Nice. Preparation began a year prior. For me, it started with a bike fit and data science. You see, my power output data indicated that relative to sprinting, my functional power over long durations was an area that I could improve, particularly for climbing in the Alps. I wanted to train and prepare smartly through precision targeting. I used a combination of structured and machine learning informed training sessions over many hours in the indoor trainer, whether at home or when traveling. During each workout, data were collected from numerous devices at least every second. I gained many insights through analyses of these billions of data points. For example, it revealed that 95% of my power output could be predicted by my leg muscle load as measured through electromyography. A further 4% was attributable to pedaling efficiencies and 1% due to other factors. The data also showed that my left glute was less active and causing an imbalance. Oxygen in the tissues and capillaries of my leg muscles was also being used very efficiently but depleting very quickly and its delivery was my limiter. Daily inhalation resistance training improved my breath strength, volume and flow rate. Next, Understanding how I applied torque through the pedal stroke and where on the pedal platform I applied the most force at different intensities and cadences helped refine my pedaling efficiency. Fundamental physics of cycling elucidates the relative importance of the different resistant forces under different conditions. Drag becomes important when traveling above about 20 km per hour. To mitigate drag, I measured the aerodynamic impact of wearing different clothes or being in different positions on the bike in real world wind tunnel testing. This guided when and how getting in a more aero position would be useful. To avoid clothing acting as a parachute, I chose to use proven Pro Team cycling kit. Drag savings can be large when riding in groups and massive when riding in a peloton. But this strategy would not be available to us on this trip. For the steep climbs of the tour, gravity needed to be overcome via power to mass ratios. Lower gear ratios could assist, but even with a compact chain ring and 36 tooth per set, optimal pedaling cadence would not always be possible and some grinding would be required. The world's most efficient chain lubricant was used to reduce the measured 8 watt power loss in the drivetrain. Nutrition would be crucial pre-ride and during all rides. I also adhered to a strict post-ride recovery routine. Lastly, to inform overall stress on my body and nutritional requirements, I derived a predictive relationship for jewels of work required for upcoming rides based on distance traveled and elevation gained and lost. Simon slept in an altitude tent to adapt to lower oxygen by producing more red blood cells and hemoglobin. But for obvious reasons, this strategy was not going to be an option in my family. We were fortunate to have a support cart and other equipment. Through months of training pain and preparation, I saw improvements in all of these areas and undoubtedly this resulted in greater pleasure during our tour of the Grand Alps.